Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day today. Well, we got a Les Paul shootout lined up for you guys. We've got three pretty high-end Les Pauls, one made in China, one made in Japan, and one made in the good old USA. So it should be a lot of fun. Let's jump in and check out the guitars. Now, guitar number one and representing China is this Epiphone 1959 Les Paul Standard. In my opinion, one of the nicest guitars Epiphone has released in some years. So let's take a quick listen to this guitar. <laughs> So as you guys could hear, this guitar is no slouch. The bridge pickup was bright enough to punch through the mix without being too brash or honky. And you know, those big bends just sustained out. So lots of sustain, lots of power on this one. Let's check out guitar number two. Our next Les Paul was made in Japan. This is an Epiphone Les Paul Custom Elitist. Now these have such a great reputation that some people say they rival the USA Gibsons. Let's take a listen and find out. <laughs> Playing over the same backing track with the same amp settings, the Japanese Les Paul here sounded maybe a touch smoother and creamier to my ear. Of course, we're going to play them back to back in a second, but so far, so good. And finally, we got the Big Dog made in the USA. This is a Gibson Les Paul standard. So we'll see how the other two high-end Epiphones hang with the Gibson here. This is in Ocean Perimeter Blue with one of the nicest tops I've ever seen. Uh, the, the flame and the 3D nature of the top never jumps in and out. It's flamey from every single angle. And that blue just makes you want to jump in and take a swim. <laughs> Now to my ear, the Gibson had more clarity, more cut, more presence than the other two guitars. But like I said, we're going to listen to these guitars played back to back in a second. And then we'll talk about like the overall quality control on each instrument. But let's transition now and hear these guitars back to back. We'll play clean in the neck and dirty in the bridge.
now that we've heard these guitars played back to back, let's talk about overall construction, specs, that kind of stuff um, when we compare China, Japan, and the USA. So let's start with the Epiphone 1959. Now, this is made in China, as you guys know, and Epiphone's Chinese factory has been fantastic for decades. At least in my ex experience, I've played on a lot of standards over the years, used ones, new ones, and they've all been very good. Just like Fender's Classic Vibe series, which is also made in China, it doesn't matter that it's made in China. What matters is you've got a good factory with good people with good quality control. And in my experience, Epiphone has been knocking it out of the park for a long time. And this 1959 just takes it up to the whole next level. It's built wonderfully. The only criticism I had in my individual demo, demo of this guitar where the frets were a little gritty on the front face. Now that I've played on it for a few weeks, all of that is gone. And the rest of the guitar is just sublime for an Epiphone. It's just beautiful. So it's got the matte finish, mahogany body, maple top. This one does have a veneer and this is in aged dark burst. So I don't have anything you know, further that I can criticize this guitar after having played on it for a few weeks. It holds tune, the fretwork is good now that the grittiness is gone, binding is great, finish is great, just an overall awesome guitar. Next up is the Black and Gold Beauty from Japan, the Epiphone Les Paul Custom Elitist. Now, the big question is, is this a nicer guitar than the Chinese 1959. Both of them feature American-made pickups, American electronics. Now there are a few unique things about the Japanese guitar. You do get, you know, the Gibson Nashville style bridge, if that matters to you. Um, and of course on the custom you do get, you know, all this five and seven ply binding everywhere, which is beautiful block inlays, gold hardware, Grover tuning machines, which are an upgrade for sure over the Epiphone ones on the 1959. Um, but there are a few stipulations. This has the slim taper neck and it is high gloss. Now the 59 has a big chunky neck, which is satin and I'm really partial to that neck. It's phenomenal. Now, of course, playing on this for a few minutes, you get used to the stickiness of the gloss, but I really do love the satin on the 1959, but that's one big difference. In terms of overall quality control, I would say the Japanese guitar feels slightly more refined. Not by a huge margin, but it does feel uh, just a little bit more, yeah, care taken um, when being built. And I mean, these things have a fantastic reputation. The downside of these is they're getting hard to find and they're getting expensive. So is it a massive upgrade over the 1959? In my experience, no, but it's a phenomenal Les Paul. Now, as for the Gibson Les Paul, you definitely get some features here that you don't get on the other two. And of course, the most obvious is a big, thick chunk of flame maple. And on this example, just drop dead gorgeous. If you're a fan of flame maple um, and you can find a nice one like this with the arch top, it's, it's hard to beat. They're just beautiful. Uh, you also get things like uh, locking tuners from the factory, uh, nitro finish if you care about that kind of stuff. Uh, but in terms of electronics, all three guitars American-made pickups, uh, American-made electronics, so it's pretty equal across the board there. And in terms of like fit and finish, well, it's not actually, you know, surprisingly, it's not night and day. They all play super awesome. And that's not an exaggeration. Like if I was blindfolded and somebody handed me these three guitars um, and plugged my nose, cause you can immediately smell a Gibson. That smell is just very unique. Um, I would be hard pressed to tell which was the more expensive guitar. They play great, they sound great, but yeah, you do get a few extra you know, features on the Gibson, but the other guitars also feature some unique things like that 1959, long tenon neck, all the standards, short tenon. Does that matter to you? I don't know, but it could be like an upgraded feature on the Epiphone. And in terms of you know the custom, you get all that binding and all that stuff. So it's just kind of like each guitar brings something unique and the Gibson for me did not like way outplay the others, especially when it costs, you know, three, four, five times what the Epiphones do. So let me know in the comments section below which Les Paul you guys thought sounded the best and which one you could actually see yourself buying. Do you care that it says Epiphone on the headstock or do you need to, you know, save up so you can see that Gibson? Do you want something a little bit more rare and unique like a Japanese made Les Paul? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to do so. I will link to the guitars and the gear I used in the video description below. You can check out all the detailed specs there. Other than that, have yourself a great day.